this is a very, very simple script. What you can see here at the top, we've picked a very simple, this is one of the Hello World examples that we really like to use. It's basically a parsed extract of a very simple invoice, basic fact-based document with very, very simple kind of elements to it. What we're gonna use, we're gonna load what's now one of our favorite models. It's a bling fine tune of the Stable LM 3 billion parameter model, very, very high quality model four bit quantized, rag fine tuned in the bling process. Really high quality, good balance of quality and speed. So one of our, our new and favorite models that we're using quite a bit. And then we're gonna set when we load the model, a few of the hyperparameters. And so we're gonna start with what we used to do. We would use a temperature setting of 0 0.3 and by default, we would always have sampling on. So there'd be some probability distribution that we would sample from, but we would set the temperature we thought pretty low and pretty conservatively. What we've also set here are a couple of other parameters that we expose now so that you have maximum control over this. You do wanna get and see the logits, and then we're setting a max output of 123 because we wanna give really granular control on exactly what that output is gonna look like. We're gonna run the inference on the model, just a simple query, what is a list of the key points, a basic kind of summarization. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna show you, we're gonna analyze that sampling and actually show you out of the tokens that are generated, how many of them and in how many cases is the output not what the top output was from the model? So with that, I think it'll be clear as we start to go run this. We're gonna run it a few different times just so you can get a sense for at different temperature settings and different sample settings, what is the ultimate impact of sampling on the output? All right, so we've got our output. You can see the LLM response. Again, looks like kind of a nice summary, uh, bullet points, entirely fact-based, largely extractive. So it's pulling key points from this text. It's not as if it's going off and writing creative fiction. But then we analyze this. And what this sampling analysis shows us here is with this setting, a temperature of 0.3, 90% of the time of these 123 tokens, the output token reflects the top uh, logit, the index of the token with the maximum argument. In other words, 10% of the time, the token that was added to our context was not the number one token that was actually provided by the model. Now let's run this again. And this time we're gonna look at this in a little bit more depth. I had just commented this out, uh, we'll take a look at it. All right, now what this is actually gonna do is it's gonna show us those not top tokens, so we can see what the output token was, and then we can actually see what the top represented logits were. Now, I'll, I'll warn you in advance, again, there's a random element to this. So it was about 10% of the time in the last sample. Let's look and see what it is this time, but it'll certainly be a little bit different than what it was in the last run. So here, in this case, it's actually 11%. So 89% of the time, it picked the top logit. What we see reflected here then, is this was every instance where the sampling algorithm did not pick the number one token as recommended by the model. This was the token number, the fifth token. It selected token 904. I don't happen to know what that is, but it's easy to look up just through a decode using the tokenizer. And then we can just sort of quickly eyeball it. All right, 904 was actually the second highest ranked logit here. But interestingly enough, Token 15 was 65%, this was 9.5%. So the model was unequivocal that token 15 was the highest um, probability, but yet because we were randomly sampling, we happened to actually pick one that was far less likely. Now, an interesting thing here when, when you look at this, the 10 or 11% may sound like a lot in its own right, but potentially it's even more than that because by picking in token five, the token 904, that impacts token six, token seven, token eight, token nine. And so it can actually have this ripple effect through the whole generation that the net effect of the output can even be more substantial than a 10% difference than if we were going with the top um, output in every single instance. Okay, so hopefully this gives you a good view of it. And again, one of the things we've been trying to do in LLMware as we've become aware of this dynamic and the potential impact of it is give you really simple and easy to use configuration parameters so that you can start to control these settings and then by analyzing the sampling, get a good view for any given query in any given generation in how many cases were it, was it deviating from this top output. So all right, so that's point three.
we thought we were being really conservative and we had set it at 0.3. Let's just try what actually a lot of the large models actually recommend a temperature of 0.7. Let's just see what the output looks like here. All right, so in this case, it's 12 to 13% of the time, the token that was selected was not the top token. What if it was, again, a lot of times people will use a temperature setting of one. What does that actually come out to mean? Again, there's gonna be, again, a stochastic element to this. So it's gonna vary a lot by the text, potentially by the model. It's gonna vary by run to run. Sometimes those changes might be really, really small. Sometimes they might be more material. Now in this case, with a temperature setting of one, 22% of the time in this generation of 123 tokens, the token that was used was not the top token that came out from the model. That's actually a lot of variation. And again, what we thought when we'd be super, super conservative, and again, no model will recommend that you do this, set the temperature to zero. And let's see, I mean, my God, like zero, the temperature zero, it's got to be turning off sampling, right? So let's look at what the output is with the temperature down to zero. Now, in this case, it's still 12%, and that might be at the higher end. Sometimes when we run this sample, it's more like 8% or 10%. In some contexts that are a little bit shorter, we've seen it as low as like three to 5%. But the point is, in most configurations, in most generation scripts that you're gonna be using, even with the temperature set at zero, there are default parameters for top P and top K that still, still have some sampling built into that generation script. There are also things like repetition penalties and other subtle biases that are built into it to give a higher quality output. So even with the temperature 0%, there's this random element that's potentially on the order of 10%. So now, finally, to get to the punchline, what if we turn sampling off altogether. So now sample is false. Temperature is set to zero. Sample is set to false. We're running the same query over and over. Interesting. So in this case, it's 100%. The output that we're seeing is exactly the output that corresponds to the, the max argument each of those 123 generations that came out of the model. Now, you can ask a lot of questions about this. You could say, is this output better? Is it substantially different? It might be we don't like this output, so we're like, no, 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 let's sort of shake the pot a little bit. Let's introduce some randomness and maybe we get better answers out of it. But the punchline is if you set temperature to zero, if you set sampling to false, in this case, this is a deterministic output. So if we run this and we were experimenting with this 100 times, it will be exactly the same outcome 100 times. So a punchline of this whole thing. We're not trying to say sampling is bad. We're not trying to discourage anybody from using sampling. Again, there's all sorts of reasons and circumstances in which some form of sampling from that probability distribution yields better outcomes. But going back to where we started, maybe you're prompting wrong. When you start thinking about these types of fact-based types of situations where you want to get it right, consistency and predictability matter. It also matters that if you're gonna be shaking it up a little bit, why are you doing that? And are you aware of how much you're doing it and how much it's ultimately impacting the output that you're receiving? So hopefully over the course of the last 10 minutes, you've learned something new. You've taken some actionable takeaways. And what we'd really encourage you to do is as you're experimenting with some of this stuff in LLMware, experiment with some of these configuration parameters. It's as easy as turning sampling to false to really experiment. And then with this analyze sampling capability, gives you really good visibility then into the impact and where in that particular generation script that we are in effect overruling what the output was from the model in that particular case. So hopefully this has given you some new tools, you've, you've gotten some new insights and you've enjoyed this. As always, check out, we'll have example code on this on the LLMware GitHub site. Any questions, any discussion, please come and join us on our Discord channel. Thank you everybody, take care and have a wonderful day.